joined here today with Dr. Larry Allen, who is the head of cardiology at the University of Colorado Hospital in Aurora, Colorado. Dr. Allen is a transplant cardiologist and he takes care of patients who are in need of subspecialty care related to advanced heart failure. Dr. Allen, to start, could you please explain what heart failure is? So heart failure is really just a generic term that says that the heart isn't working as well as it should. There are many causes of heart failure. Uh, some of the most common are coronary artery disease causing a heart attack, uncontrolled high blood pressure or hypertension causing chronic stress to the heart, valvular heart problems where the heart valves are either stenotic and sticky or overly leaky, myocarditis where the heart can be affected by a virus, and then other causes of stress to the heart, um, external to the heart, such as hyperthyroidism or severe anemia or alcohol um, or stimulant drugs like methamphetamines and cocaine. So I see patients who have all kinds of different heart problems that end up in the common uh, final pathway of heart failure. And so what are the symptoms of heart failure? So when patients develop heart failure, the heart isn't working as well as it should. This results in two main problems. The first is that the heart doesn't pump blood forward as well as it should. The most common symptoms related to this are fatigue, uh, dizziness, low blood pressure, um, and just generally feeling sick and tired and uh, with less energy. The second main symptom is that when people have a heart that's not pumping blood forward very well, one of the ways the body co compensates is by holding on to salt and fluid. The body fills with fluid uh, and this improves the heart's ability to pump blood forward, but it leaves patients congested meaning that they have swelling or edema and fluid in the, often in their ankles and their belly. It also collects fluid in the lungs, which we call pulmonary edema, causing shortness of breath, particularly with exercise or when lying down. So when I think of patients with heart failure, they're tired, they're short of breath, and they have swelling. Are there any tips that people can take and start doing today if they are worried or maybe they have a history of heart failure in their family or they have been recently diagnosed? So patients often ask me what they can do uh, to improve their heart health uh, and either prevent heart failure or make the symptoms of heart failure less. The American Heart Association has developed Life's Essential Aid, which are eight key measures for improving and maintaining cardiovascular health. These include the following. One, eat better. Two, be more active. Three, quit tobacco if you use tobacco. Four, get healthy sleep. Five, manage weight to a good um, uh, overall weight. Six, control cholesterol, including a prescription of statin therapy if needed. Seven, manage your blood sugar, uh, including taking diabetes drugs if you have diabetes. And eight, keep your blood pressure under control, including treatment with antihypertensive drugs uh, to an average resting blood pressure of less than 130 over 80. Putting these eight different activities together makes it much less likely that patients will develop cardiovascular disease, uh, including the prevention and management of heart failure.